Hey, if you want to know everything about how to stage your home to sell, check out this episode. Really, Mary? Good morning. It is Monday, so therefore it must be really Mary. <laughs> or really, Mary? I don't know. <laughs> With me this morning, I have our guest, Lisa Fulkerson. And Lisa is not only a very talented stager, she is actually an awesome realtor. Aw, thanks. Part this group. And Lisa, all guests have to say, really, Mary. So go for it. Give it your best. <laughs> really, Mary? <laughs> love it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, this morning we're talking about staging and staging is such an important part of presenting your home for not just the photographs, but how we're going to uh, show it and ultimately sell it. So Lisa, um, I know you've got some tips and thoughts behind that. I'm going to turn it over to you to kind of share some things and, and some key things that you think are important. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having me. Um, some of you may or may not know, I staged a lot for the Bartos Group before I became an agent. And so I've been doing it for quite some time, a little over six years here in the Naples area. And um, I try to bring to your attention, if you have a home that you're trying to sell, um, sometimes we get used to where we live. And having an, a second set of outside eyes really can work to your advantage to selling your home. Um, and there's a few mantras I try and hold fast and steady to. Um, the first one is less is more. And we, uh, when we look at your home and uh, we start from the curb appeal as we walk through your front door and then as we go through your home, um, overall less, less is more. So that's kind of a general blanket statement. The other term I use is, is neutralize. And oftentimes if we've lived in the home for an extensive amount of years, we've collected personal items, mementos, family photos, et cetera, et cetera, that make that home our own. And those are precious, precious things. When we go into stage a home, we try and neutralize the personality. And you're thinking, why? <laughs> well, <laughs> for a of reasons. Um, again, staging, we want to make it appealing to the broadest spectrum of potential buyers out there and giving your home kind of a neutralized look will allow potential buyers to go in and place their personality onto that home to see how they could fit into your home. And uh, so those are, those are a couple general statements as far as staging goes. Um, Mary, I don't know how specific you want me to get or if you have specific questions uh, you would like uh, for me to answer. Well, you know, I love that you said that. Um, less is more. And by the way, when I go into a home and offer Lisa's services on our dime, right, um, she goes in and helps people figure out what less is more is. So whether you're talking with the Bartos group or somebody else, you're going to kind of think about thinning and Lisa, you always say, start packing, right? I mean, this is a great time. Perfect time to not only pack, but I also suggest, you know, you have those, those three piles. You have, we're keeping this and it's going with this pile. You have, I need to donate this. Or you have the pile, I could sell this and make some money. So <laughs> it's a great time to get organized. And it's a great time uh, to figure, hey, we're moving, what's coming with and what is not. And well, what about the throwaway pile? I think I have some of those in my house. Yeah, well, for sure. There's always that throwaway pile. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're hoping that some of this stuff is usable and, and you can donate it to someone who's in need. But for sure, um, if I were to go through my house today and get up and move, I would definitely have a throwaway pile as well. <laughs> But I love when you say that is less is more, um, you know, and really kind of thinking through that. I mean, Lisa comes in and when we talk about less is more, she goes through and itemizes, you know, hey, I think you might want to take this down or thin this out or those kind of things. And having that person that isn't as um, as 
in tuned into your home or you know uh, i'm i i really need to have this uh and she says oh, maybe not so much it's hard to do that on your own i know when my husband comes in when joe comes in lisa and looks at me and says i think you should do this this and this it's like no those are mine right <laughs> but to have an impartial person third party come in and help you through that is really a great advantage so if not the bartos group and you're looking to sell then make sure you get a friend that comes in that you trust that can come in and give an eye. The second thing, go ahead. Well, and one other thing I, I do suggest to um, potential sellers is take an hour or so to walk through um, a model home. And, you know, is there a toaster on the counter in a model home? You know, are there trash cans sitting out in a model home? So uh, just to, not that we would necessarily need your home to look like a model home, but you understand at least what we're trying to achieve by staging your home. Without a doubt. And, and um, we're going to talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the way we photograph, the way we live, and the way we show, right? Yes. The next thing that you said um, really that resonated with me is neutralize your home, right? So, you know, depersonalize it. Um, when you talk about that, when you talk about neutralization, talk a little bit more about, you know, obviously we think about family photos, but what else does that include? Right. Well, a lot of us have pets. Uh, there are some of us that are upgrading that have small children. Um, so it can also mean for pictures, for uh, showing, let's, let's, store away the pet toys and the pet bed and the crate, if the crate could go in, in the garage. Um, if you have a playroom, we understand there is a playroom. Let's just keep it organized. Let's put toys in bins uh, just, just to make it look not so cluttered. We're kind of decluttering. Um, if you are um, someone that has a collection of um, what we call tchotchkes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're little, they're little, cute little things. Little, little things, little, little home accessories, or if you're a collector of, of pigs or thimbles, <laughs> that's the time <laughs> to pack these things up and take, take to your next adventure. And um, so again, clean surfaces, um, you don't even need to keep your box of Kleenexes out on your nightstand for, for photos. So, you know, things like that that maybe you wouldn't think of that the third party eye sees and knows that it'll photograph better if there's nothing on that surface. And um, as far as neutralization, um, in, in some cases, it may be buying a couple gallons of paint. Um, and we can certainly, if you don't paint, we can certainly find someone who can and, and paint a couple of the purple walls, you know, when you were in that mood and you painted your small bathroom purple just on a whim. You know, it's time to get that uh, uh, gray or, or grayish, as we say, gray beige paint out and um, give, give it a quick coat of paint. And... Um, Try and, you know, staging is almost a polar opposite of interior design. Um, interior design focuses on your personality and how we're going to make this house your home. Staging is kind of sucking that personality out and neutralizing, <laughs> <laughs> neutralizing it, almost making it a blank canvas with, with some kind of warmth. Uh, we don't want someone to go into a cold white box. Uh, we certainly want to keep that warmth aspect, but to neutralize and not just neutralize the appearance. Um, there may be cases uh, when there's pets involved or neutralize some odor as well. And, you know, there are tips that we can suggest to you for, for that. So yeah, just, just overall neutralize. <laughs> I love that. Um, you know, I'm going to go with that neutralization of the pet odor or cigarette smoke. I, not many people do, but we get to those occasionally. And we do have companies, you know, that will come in and have an enzyme that will eat that up because if we can do that in advance, you're going to get more money for the home. And then also you're going to get, you know, at the end of the day, it's not going to come up and you're going to get money off the home or stop a sale. Um, we recently had a home that she had two large dogs and she was very fastidious about, you know, wiping paws or whatever, but we were in the rainy season and the dogs had an odor 
And it, we had to take that odor out or the guy was not gonna take the house. And that, I love that you brought that up because that was so clear. Now, Lisa, I love a couple gallons of paint. Um, you know, painting can take time and people, you know, there's a balance between painting the whole house and or taking out some of the color. Do you have some thoughts on that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I often will see in homes if someone has a flair for color um, and there is a different color in every room and you know the the main room is bright orange and green or something <laughs> <I've seen it. laughs> um you know in that case we we might want to invest a little bit more um but like i had mentioned earlier if you've just done a feature wall in a in a bold funky color um or if you've done a a, a child's room and made it purple or pink and you know there, there certainly is a fine line between, well, we're still living here, but we need to sell. So, right. you know, it's it's definitely going to be the homeowner's decision. But as a as a stager and like Mary was was saying to to max out your price and to get uh, the highest dollar and the most interested parties. Um, let's go ahead and find that that neutral color that will enhance. And oftentimes the lighter colors that we go with will really make your rooms look larger. Uh, the lighter the color, the larger the home. And, and that is one really important aspect of staging is showing, you know, we're not trying to sell furniture. We're not trying to sell paint colors. We want you to see the home itself. And you don't want lots of distractions. And so that's, that's, you know, the minimization, the neutralization, we're trying to, to get rid of the distractions in the home. And so they can focus on the potential of the home itself. And uh, so painting a room, uh, again, it's inexpensive and it does a world of good. It really Without does. a doubt. Yeah. You know, um, one last topic that I want to uh, just talk about is, and you touched on it, the way we photograph, the way we show a home, and the way we live in a home are three very different ways. Yeah. But we don't walk in to judge someone because if you walked in to see my house, always you would see clutter everywhere because I'm moving fast and just things land. And I have now only four of us in the house, but still just stuff, right? Right. But if I'm going to sell the house, I want to make sure that paint looks good, that it's orderly, that it's thinned out. And my photos look without things on the cabinets. And when I go to show it, there might be a couple things on the cabinets, right, Lisa? Because yes. that's the way we're living. Right. Um, but I don't have to get rid of all of it when I'm showing. Because when you agree, when you go out to Zillow and look at all those photos of house after house after house, the ones you gravitate to have less. Absolutely. Um, and now that I'm in, in real estate, <clears throat> with a staging background, when I'm looking for properties for prospective buyers, you know, I, I do pay special attention to the photos. And um, it's, it's amazing that some agents still aren't prioritizing this. And, and if the photos are lacking, you can also coincide days on market. <laughs> it's, well said. Well it's, said. It's, um, not a coincidence. Yeah. And, um, you know, the Bartos group specifically, we, we're not going to take a picture with in a bathroom with a mirror and you're going to see one of us standing holding a camera in the replacement. <laughs> that's just not, that's not how, how we work. If you don't roll that way. <laughs> and, I, and I've never seen for, you know, that when you're out there searching in Zillow and, you know, Realtor and whatever, the photos that don't take up the whole space, they're straight up and down versus all of them the same way. I mean, you know, we're in 2020, let's face it. We, we can, or 2020s, whenever we're watching this, we can make photos look good, right? And it doesn't have to be fucking science. So making sure that not only staged, right, Lisa, but also, you know. Now, I, one, one other thought, I keep saying one other thought because it just comes to, comes to mind. We, we've got an empty house, right? We, there's a couple of things that we can do, right? We can 
hire somebody to bring in a full house mm -hmm. of furniture, or we can virtually stage. Um, how do you weigh in on those? Uh, excellent question. Um, I know when um, homes are virtually staged, that is disclosed in uh, the listing. So it does give you a, a good sense of, of space. And um, if the house has kind of an interesting floor plan, at least it can give you an idea of what would go where. Uh, that is, that's, uh, again, economically, it's, it's, a, it's a good tool uh, to virtually stage um, for showings. However, when you get in that space, sometimes you can get lost again and think, okay, what, what was here? What was there? Um, so, you know, if it, if it makes sense financially to get real furniture in a home, I would say at least the main living space to get real furniture in that home uh, is, is really an advantage over the virtual staging. Uh, then you're not really um, missing any eyes. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll have that person in that home and, and can see how a living space. Um, staging an entire home is not necessary. I don't believe uh, if you have the measurements of the bedrooms, you can usually figure out how much a king bed space takes up, queen, twins. Uh, so I don't see that as vital as, as the main part of the home living space to see that with real furniture in it. So again, they both have their advantages and, um, but I'm still uh, waving the flag for getting some real furniture in, in the home. I love that. I love that you're waving the flag. I've got the visual over here, Lisa. <laughs> um, you know, Lisa's talked about a lot of great things here. Let me see if I can uh, share my screen real quick. So, Lisa, we have the prepare to sell, learn how to stage your home for selling and showing ebook. That there'll be a link below in this uh, video so that people can actually get it. And if you're thinking about selling, you know, we'll email it over to you so you can see exactly what goes into that. Um, there's a, a huge list of things that you can do outdoor preparation, uh, as well as uh, indoor preparations, preparing for the showings, and more importantly, getting your home sold. So if, again, you're looking to sell or just create that model home experience, uh, make sure you sign up for the ebook below. And it's a free ebook that we're offering to anybody that sends us information. Um, you'll have it below uh, so that you can sign up to get that. And so you can kind of read through that if you're thinking about selling or, you know, or just want to declutter, right? Um, and think about some ideas for that uh, and what it would look like to live in a, a model home. We've got those ideas for you. I, one, uh, one last thing, Lisa. I, I'm just going to keep one last thing. I was in a home yesterday of a builder. Um, we were looking at the home, the spec home. And we went to her home, which was one of the homes they built. Mm -hmm. And it was like eye candy for me of the, you know, perfect model home. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, that, like the toothbrush wasn't out. I, I couldn't, I, everything was like, it wasn't even lived in. And they had lived, they live in this home for three years. Yeah. I was so blown away. 5,500 square feet of how do you keep a house like that clean and ready to show at a moment's notice because she wanted to show the, features and finishes of her home and they didn't have a model. Right. Unbelievable. So <laughs> having, again, I don't live that way. Um, I don't definitely couldn't show that way. And I definitely don't live in the way that we're going to photograph. But if you're looking to do that, we sure welcome the opportunity to give you a few tips and hints on how to do that. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us here on. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Mary. On what show are we on? Really, Mary? <laughs> I love that. And until next episode, we look forward to seeing you. If you have questions or uh, ideas that you want to run past us, please give us a call or you can direct message or instant message us. Again, Lisa Lewis Fulkerson. Lisa, give them your phone number in case they want to reach you and talk to you personally. Of course. I'm 269-532-6564. And for Mary Bartis and that really, Mary, or really Mary, or really Mary, I don't know. You say it however you want to. Really Mary. <laughs> really Mary. <laughs> Until next episode, we look forward to seeing you and have a great and wonderful time.